welcome two-time Grammy Award winner. He is a personal mentor to several professional athletes, and his new memoir, Unashamed, is in stores now. Hip-hop artist Lecrae in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Glad to be here. We, we're welcome. So, we're so happy to have you. So tell us about this new memoir. What's yes, the message are. Yep, in your, in your book, Unashamed? Uh, well, Unashamed is really, you know, it's kind of a memoir of, of seeing somebody, you know, come through my circumstances of fatherlessness and, and wrestling with identity and who I wanted to be and who I should be, uh, finding myself grounded on this journey that um, led to spiritual awakening. But then, at the, but, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, now the story's all good. You're happy. Um, but truthfully, there was a lot more damage after that awakening that I really had to come to grips with. And so now being Unashamed... Um, is, is really a, 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 is me exposing myself and saying, man, here's my flaws, here's my scars, I'm going to lay them all out, and maybe you'll find some healing looking at my scars. So that's, that's kind of the, the story of the trials and tribulations of Lecrae, in a sense, yeah. Stephen A.? I'm kind of want, I, I, you know, listen, I, I, I'm speaking facetiously, obviously, because none of us are perfect, but yeah. I'm kind of wondering what trials and tribulations that you, you've gone through, because I mean, my goodness, you yeah. know, gospel and, you know, Christian album and what have you, you grew up, you know, idolizing Tupac and Ice Cube, but somehow you're in this genre. How did all of that come about? How did that transformation, assuming there was a transformation, yeah. take place? When and where, when and why? Yeah, I'm all, you know, I would say we're, we're all in transition, you know, just constantly, you know, and and, um, and for me, uh, you know, just growing up a, a product of hip-hop and a product of hip-hop culture, those are my primary influences, and so it wasn't as if uh, I just kind of, you know, I didn't grow up in church or anything like that, and as far as genres are concerned, man, I just, I love hip-hop, I love the culture of it, it's just that, you know, uh, around 19 years old, um, you know, I, I found myself on a college campus and, and I was around Christians who look like me, they dress like me, they talk like me. And it was kind of off-putting. I didn't, I didn't know what to do with that. Um, but they loved me. They mentored me. They embraced me and, um, and, and really, man, opened me up to, 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 you know, understand who I was and who I was created to be and understand that God made me with purpose and with reason. And, uh, man, that really began to, to, to broaden my horizons and, you know, the trials and tribulations, you know, I, I got a laundry list. And so a lot of people would assume, oh, you're a Christian, you're good, you're clean, you're perfect. But but truthfully, you know, I, I'm, you know, backstory of, of a lot of abuse, molestation, um, you know, made a lot of terrible decisions in my life. And, um, and, and still, you know, even through it all, um, you know, God has sustained me, held me down and allowed me to, you know, can continue to thrive and, uh, and, and keep pushing. So if I may right. say so, over the years, I have checked out a number of Christian rappers, and, and they've never been very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are gifted. Yeah. And to me, Gravity was Breakthrough, oh, wow. and Tell the World is still my favorite off That's that awesome. album, because you are speaking to people and reaching people with your God-given talent, because sure. it's extreme. Yeah. So obviously, your lyrics, by rap standards, are clean. Yeah. What, if any, impact have you had on other rappers cleaning up their <laughs> lyrics? I th I, well, you know, what I, what I always wanted to do was be authentic. And, um, and you know, uh, hip-hop is, is a culture that was created from disenfranchised and marginalized communities in New York. And, and, um, and there was a lot of social and science to hip-hop. It was angry and aggressive because of, you know, the circumstances that in society that, right. that, that pushed down on it. And for me, I wanted to inject the spiritual. You know, there's a lot of social, a lot of scientific, but but I wanted to bring the spiritual piece. You know, there's Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, all this soul music that embodied all this stuff, but in hip-hop, it was kind of absent. And so there's a lot of anger and a lot of pain and not a lot of people bringing healing and bringing encouragement and saying, listen, you can be more than what you are. You can you can do more than what, you know, people say you can do. And um, I just want to be... Uh, a voice of, of of substance and healing. So when I put my arm around some of these guys, you know, in the, in the industry, um, I'm encouraging them. And I'm telling them, man, you're talented. You know, you know, we can use that for far more than just degrading and, you know, all the other stuff that we, you know, we, we use our music for. Anybody listen? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. people respect it, man. You know, I got good relationships with people, you know, uh, all throughout the hip hop industry and, and the music industry. And so, you know, people oh. respect it. Yeah. That's where I was going. That's where I was going. I wanted to know if they listened, but I wanted to get specific. The yeah. athlete mm. compared to the hip-hop artist. How yeah. receptive are both? 
genres, are they equally receptive yeah. or do you find one to be more receptive than the other? So what I would say is sometimes that genre, when you kind of classify it as gospel or Christian, it's off-putting. And, and so a lot of times I don't I don't label it. I, I make music. I'm Lecrae, the person is a Christian. I may talk about social issues. I may talk about, you know, love, relationships. I may talk about my, my, my love for Jesus. It could be all of that. But I remember I was at a, I was at a, a practice for the Kings one time and, um, and you know, and, you know, one of the, the coaches introduced me. He was like, hey, guys, we got a gospel rapper here. He got some CDs for y'all. And all the players were like, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. And, you know, I actually write about that in a book because that 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 kind of adjective is uh, some, pe some people look at it like, well, the music is going to be terrible or it's going to be corny or, you know, it's, it's, you, you're not going to be speaking about anything relevant. I can't relate to you. But what's what's happened over time is people have recognized, oh, man, he's talking about real stuff. Like the music is dope. He's talking about real stuff. And, you know, I, it's not a sermon necessarily. I can go to church on Sunday to get a sermon, but it's encouraging and it's uplifting and it's and it's, in, and it's empowering. And I think in a locker room, athletes want to hear something to get them riled up. They want to hear something to, to, to get them focused on that on on the field on a court whatever it may be and um and then i provide a, an alternative to some of the other stuff that you know some cats mm -hmm. may be listening to so you've grown close to steph curry that's my man yeah D describe to us on a spiritual level yeah. what he's made of man steph is uh he's solid through and through you know i mean it's it's not just uh it's not you know just tongue-in-cheek with him um, real deal. It's re he's a real deal. You yep. know what I mean? You can see it, you know, in, in the subtle things and, and the bigger things. I think, you know, even just watching him on the court, obviously he's a human. He's not, you know, perfect. He's not the, the, the perfect picture of a human being, but he's but he's real. He's authentic. He's he's serious about his faith. Um, he's humble. He's a good father. He's a husband. He's I mean, he's a role model. And, um, you know, just and he's, the, you know, one of arguably the greatest player in the NBA right now, the shooter. And, and so it's like, man, to wear all of that and to still maintain that humility and that grounding, uh, man, it's a testament to his faith. And it's hard when you put somebody on that high a pedestal, and we've put Steph on a pretty high pedestal, Absolutely. both as a player and a father-husband. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah, but he, but he maintains, and he does it well. He's got great people around him, and uh, really proud of him. You know what I mean? He challenged me to a... a How do you feel? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Go nah, ahead. No, nah, no. He challenged you to what? I he, didn't he, he challenged me to, uh, to help... Um, you know, uh, fight malaria by, you know, by, by calling my shot, by making a shot. And, uh, you know, I was like, what kind of shot do I shoot? <laughs> it was Steph, you know, challenging me in this particular situation. And? Uh, we sat and deliberated it, and I yeah. just, you know, I kind of just uh, just went for a one-hand three-point shot. That's the best, best I could do. And? No, of course Maybe? I hit it. Oh, of course you hit it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Stephen A. I wanted I, I, what I wanted to ask was that when, when you think about the the players themselves yeah. uh, being so receptive to you, how receptive are you to the level of pressure applied to some of these young guys who may not have the level head that you have, yeah. but yet share the same obligations, being called upon to be role models, being called upon to conduct themselves in upstanding fashion and things of that nature. What are your thoughts about all of that? Yeah, I, 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 that's why I make myself available to them. You know, first of all, I know it's extremely hard for them to trust anybody. You know, they got everybody pushing at them, pulling at them, grabbing at them. Um, and for me, it's just, it's really been making sure that they understand that I see them as a person, as a human, as a whole person. Like, you know, I know what you do on the field, on the court, um, but you're a, a whole person and that's how I want to look at you. And, um, and you know, you know, every you know every player needs a multitude of different coaches. You know, you got to have your strength and conditioning coach. You may have a shooting coach, whatever it may be. And I just look at myself as is trying to offer uh, a different kind of coaching. You know what I mean? So it may be spiritual, mental, emotional uh, coaching that that maybe I can bring to the table. And, and at the end of the day, man, just a friend, a friend that that can understand what it's like to be in the limelight, to understand what it's like to have all the pressures on you, um, but to still maintain your integrity, to still maintain your focus, to still go out there and do a good job and. Uh, and man, I'm, I'm, I just like to be available for for guys in that way. In that way, you've led some chapel studies over the last few years, some yeah. some pregame Bible studies, if you will, both NBA, NFL, also. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How receptive have the the managements of the teams been to you? Because in my past, I've known a lot of chaplains, and sometimes there's a little pushback, like that's a little too much, a little too close for comfort to us. We want to keep it a little more open in our locker room. Yeah, it's just different from team to team. You know, it's just different from team to team. Everybody's been really good and really open. Um, it, you know, and uh, a, a lot of great relationships have developed because of that. You know, I remember going into the the uh, 
pre-Super Bowl game when, when the Ravens were playing, and, and and that was just a very spiritual place. You know what I mean? It was like I didn't, right. they didn't need me in the room. After Ray Lewis, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it was just I didn't need me in the room. But um, but a lot of teams have been really receptive, and um, and you know, and and it's been good for me. You know, it's been good for me to just. You know, I think they realize that I see them as real people. You know what I mean? I made some crazy, you know, one crazy uh, situation. I remember uh, doing the chapel for the um, uh, uh, for the Giants, and and I was in the in the room, and and I was like, Yo, I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. My man, right here. Get up here. What's your name? And he was like, Eli. I was like, Yeah, of course it is. My <laughs> Um, but it's just it, it it's it's a good place where people can realize, man. I'm just here as a real guy to help you out in any way I can. You know, I'm not here for autographs. I'm not here to, you know, to, to, to talk about any of the other stuff than all the, the, the glitz and the glam and the fame and the glory stuff. I'm just here on some real stuff. You got real issues. You got a, a mom. You got a baby moms. You got all kind of other stuff going on. I'm here for you. You know what I mean? Well, Craig, we talk about other people being open to you. Thank you for being open and sharing mm -hmm. your past and, and bringing this message of healing Thank and hope. You. You're, yep. you're a light, and, and this, is, this is beautiful, and it's an honor to have you have you here with us. So. Uh, the honor's mine. Keep doing right. your thing. Plan to keep it up. God we're, bless you. We're rooting Thank for you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. We'll have All more the best to you, bro. after the break. Stay here.